This is the Fifth Estate Winning Headlines, your media police post. In this segment, we summarize some of the headlines that you might have missed this morning, and we take a look at the political pieces we call cartoons in this country. Today is the 10th of June, 2020, and I am DM. I'm Tuam. And I am JM. Let's get to the headlines. Mm. In the Daily Nation, impeached, baptism by fire for Waigoro. Mm. And in the Standard, kicked out, will Uhuru let her go? Mm. And in the Star, why Senate may save impeached and Waigoro. Mm. So shall we begin with the Daily Nation? Absolutely. So yesterday, the MCAs of Kirinyaga County impeached their governor, Anwai Guru. And the nation is telling us that uh, this is a culmination of the fights that have been happening in Kirinyaga between the governor and the MCAs, in stadiums, in churches, on roadsides. And now it's ended in the county assembly. Hmm. Um, so the MCAs accused the governor of three things, undermining mm. the authority of the assembly, gross violation of the constitution, and uh, failing to deliver a state of the county annual address. Interestingly, no. there is also another accusation um, that she violated the Public uh, Procurement and Disposal of Assets Act by allegedly usurping the powers of the accounting officer and establishing an irregular tender evaluation committee which featured her cronies. Mm, mm. That is the long and short of it. This last part perhaps suggests that the MCAs might also be um, unhappy that they were, or they feel like they were not included in uh, uh, the running of the county or No, mm. accumulation of funds. <laughs> Precisely. <laughs> it sounds to me, first of all, that those allegations uh, are frivolous. But number two, they could be dog whistling here. Uh, and maybe they've been dog, uh, dog whistling for a while, yeah. uh, but, but the, uh, Madam Governor has not been uh, uh, listening. Mm. Uh, and dog whistling here is, is saying, look, if you don't throw a few bones our, our way, way, if then you don't you're going give us down. a few crumbs, then we will, you know, hound you out of office. Mm. Mm. So whether this, Shame, really. yeah, whether this uh, impeachment will be successful or not will, of course, be determined by the Senate yeah. uh, in the next uh, ten days or or ten, day, ten days after receiving the Speaker of the Assembly's uh, resolution, the County Assembly's um, resolution. Mm. They will convene and set up a special committee to see if the accusations against the governor are substantiated. Guys, if this uh, impeachment goes through, mm. the next governor of uh, Kirinyaga will be that guy who was caught illegally voting in a lodging <laughs> in Nakuru. You know, oh my. <laughs> the law is an ass. You know, um, <laughs> when I, I look it at is. this thing, and, and especially the standards, are, mm. um, uh, uh, what the headline mm. kicked out, will who let her go? You see, I doubt there was a time when Uhuru Kenyatta was in Kirinyaga. Mm. And he said this. Mm. Uh, first, he warned the uh, he warned the county not to cool up people's uh, money. But second, that was a time when it was being impeached, and he told the governor, "You see, the MCS just behind you. Don't uh, give them an opportunity to to do it because uh, if you are going to <laughs> embezzle funds for the people, they then these guys are gonna do to you are gonna do to you what they did to Aitito." Mm. And I also, he was speaking mm. to Anwar Guru. He the was speaking. Told he Anwar was Guru. speaking to. Anwegoro. These MCAs could take you out. Yes, he was speaking to Anwegoro. He, he, he wasn't addressing her directly, but you could tell that the subject mm. matter that was in his speech was Anwegoro. Wow, oh the plot thickens. Uh, yes. And so we have a three-part criteria that mm. we use to assess the headlines. Mm. Are they topical or speculative, repetitive or groundbreaking, and finally thoughtful or just plain lazy? Mm. Yeah. That's the Daily Nation. I think we park that. Yeah. Mm. Uh, shall we move on to the star? Mm -hmm. Yes. Very quickly. Yeah. Uh, why Senate may save impeached Anwar Goro. So mm. as you said, DM, this is now going to move on to the uh, Senate. And in the star, they say that the victory of Kenyan MCAs could be short-lived as the impeachment battle now moves there. And Waigoro, who is a close ally of uh, President Kenyatta and Raila Odinga, may uh, be rescued by them and their allies in the Senate. <laughs> and uh, she's a key proponent, we're told, of the BBI process. She's also a key ally of the president in central Kenya. And mm -hmm. so on those two grounds, she may just be uh, protected from impeachment. Mm. <laughs> hey, guys, let me tell you, uh -huh. um, I doubt it. And I doubt it for this reason. You see, this is natural selection happening. Mm. Anwe Guru <laughs> has been considered to be heir to the throne for, of, of, for Gema. 
yeah. right? that she will succeed Uhuru Kenyatta. Now, an impeachment motion signals this, that she will be naturally opted out, ejected out of the position of leader of GEMA if, uh, you know, I mean, come 2022. Mm. Now, that reduces, that removes a headache from Uhuru Kenyatta because he says he will choose his successor. Waiguru will no longer be in the list of potential successors uh, of Uhuru Kenyatta. Mm. And maybe, who knows, maybe Uhuru Kenyatta will choose to succeed himself. <laughs> mm, 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 but, mm. but uh, to him, that is not necessarily true. If you look at the history of our politics, mm. um, uh, uh, corruption scandals do not condemn you into political darkness. Impeachments will not either. So mm. it doesn't mean that if you uh, suffer this uh, political setback, then you're removed from the equation. Yeah. In fact, uh, as we saw in the case of Anwar Guru herself, what appeared to be a political setback, being infamous or being um, accused of participating in or being the architecture of grand corruption, Actually, you could say contributed to her getting to where she is now. Yeah. So our politics think. does not work in my, that my linear way. My, my, my thinking is, if even if we Anwe Guru stole a packet of sugar from State House, for as long as she gets impeached for it, it is fair game. She will not be in the equation of the game of succession. Mm. That's it. Period. Mm. Interesting perspective. Uh, and what do we have in the standard? In the standard was uh, kicked out. Will Uhuru let her go? That's what I'm okay. saying. Um, Look, two M has already said it. It's it's <laughs> it's. If if you think about it, this uh, lady had been saved before, uh, back in I think 2014, 2015, when Mithikal Intuli tried an impeachment motion in Parliament. Yeah, and then she was saved by the powers that be. Mm. Now, uh, come come 2020. Do you think that these people will let her go? And uh, from, the, uh, from the facts of things, it looks like she stepped on people's toes. Mm. For how long will she, will she step on people's toes and people continue looking? They'll say, ah, let her go. I mean, she, she'll be... Mm. She'll be uh, she could, yeah, it is, it is likely. Remember also that the very uh, same Senate that she's going to appear before yeah. is the same Senate that um, impeached Waititu. And therefore, the, the converse is true, mm -hmm. that it may be the same Senate that, uh, that will save her. Yeah. <laughs> However, I do agree that amongst all political animals living, mm. none is more for, for, uh, ferocious mm. than MCAs or persistent. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, so absolutely. this is something that is not going to end uh, soon. Yeah, yeah. And you see, an impeachment okay. motion by the MCA is actually a vote of no confidence. Now, mm. you're telling the Senate to save her, she, then she goes back to the same people who will pass her budget. Mm. Of course, they'll refuse to pass mm. her budget. Mm. They'll frustrate her. The county business will not run. And therefore, the Embu man, mm. remember to M, kept going back. But the guy was saved by kept the courts. Back, he was yes. saved by the courts. Yeah. 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 But he still goes back to the same MCAs. Yeah. So, yeah, it is an interesting system. Yes, yes. And so, whom do we award the uh, winning headline? I don't know. I, I think I will go I, with the star. I, yes, yes. Uh, Not the standard. Kicked sh out. Will Uhuru sh let her go? Shall we go with the Daily Nation? <laughs> we, Let's we go with the Daily Nation. Actually, guys, <laughs> actually, the standard is being very cheeky by, by putting that. It sounds yeah. like a very soap opera kind. So let that us he's toss on the to standard and the star, and we have a winning headline from the Daily Nation. Oh. Yeah, absolutely. And on to the political pieces that we call cartoons in this country. We've got a three part criteria that we use to assess the cartoons. Are they humorous or dry? Satirical, pessimistic, and effective, or just plain lazy. Mm. Uh, the Daily Nation. These these are, are these hammers. Yeah, this, this is a pendulum a, a swinging. Pe swinging pendulums. They look like hammers, and uh, mm. one girl keeps missing uh, one after the other, and uh, you can tell on the third one she's uh, sweating. Mm. Um, look, <laughs> I, I think the context day is her impeachment yesterday. Yep. Yeah. And uh, this uh, swinging hammer could be the Senate, the last one, the third one. Yes. Could be the Senate. If yeah. she survives that one, then hey, this yeah. lady has nine lives. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. actually, it's depicting how she's narrowly, and what you referred to to him. Yeah that she has narrowly escaped impeachment before. Yeah. So mm. and, and just generally political calamity. NYS, yeah. she escaped, yeah. now impeachment. And the second, the last <laughs> is the Senate. Yeah. And of the standard. The standard. In the standard, we have the same way guru on uh, tied mm. onto uh, railway <laughs> tracks yeah. with uh, many ropes. Yeah. And there's a label there that says, with love, MCA is showing that they're the ones who put her in that position. <laughs> but uh, there's an oncoming mm. train yeah. of impeachment, and the train itself yeah. is yeah. the Senate. Uh, absolutely. So, mm. Kaso is probably asking her, mm. us, mm. who will untie her? 
It's obviously not the Senate because the Senate is the train itself. So is he implying that she will be saved by somebody that is not in Senate? Oh, perhaps. We'll this, see. Yeah. This and in, in the star, we have a cartoon here, a caricature of uh, Anne Waiworo, mm. uh, Moses Butangola, and uh, Duale mm. holding on to a seat very tightly yeah. in their dear lives. Yeah. As they're blown away by the different purges that have been going on mm. in the last few weeks. Waigoro is the latest casualty. Butangola uh, has, has pretty much uh, left. You see his fingers there. Uh, you know, just hanging on barely yeah. to the seat. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and uh, Duale is holding on with all that he's got. <laughs> his le survive. legs are wrapped around. Yeah. yeah. His arms, even his head is in the chair. Yeah. Mm. Very it's humorous. Good it's one. Still, to every politician has their shelf life. Uh, Ed and Duale, mm. who would have thought that he would be, mm. you know, on the chopping board a mm. couple of weeks ago? Who would have thought that Wetangula, mm. an, an entire super uh, losing party, his leader, party losing mm. his party on a gazette notice, I think, printed. Was it on a Sunday? Anyway, mm. I don't know. And then uh, Anwar Goro, just the main proponent of uh, BBI in central Kenya, just. And the heir apparent, as yeah, you call and her. Yeah, the heir apparent, has just spat out like that. Uh, it tells you that maybe there's a what there's a quiet revolution happening within. There's uh, a wind of change. Our, our there's a wind of change. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Whom shall we award the winning cartoon? I would give it. I, I love ozones. Uh, same here. I, I, I love ozone as well. Shall yeah. we then toss the uh, standard? Absolutely. And the nation. Yes. Fantastic. And so the star gives us our winning cartoon. And so what is our final thought? And now our final thought. It is inspired by a book entitled How to Be a Dictator. The Cult of Personality in the 20th Century mm. by Frank Dicotta. Indeed it is, and in, in this book he examines the cult of personality through the historical interrogation of eight dictators. Mussolini of Italy, Hitler of Germany, Stalin of Russia, Mao Zedong of China, Kim Il-sung of North Korea, Duvalier of Haiti, Ceausescu of Romania, and Mengistu of mm. Ethiopia. Right. Two M. Should Mugabe had been in, included in this list, he'd mm. have been very Part upset. Two. <laughs> <laughs> so he gives by he begins by um, giving us the description of 20th century dictators, yeah. and he said, number one, a dictator must instill fear in his people, mm. but yes. if he can compel them to also praise, worship, and acclaim him, then he will last longer. Yes. And he says the paradox of the 20th century dictator is mm. that he must create the illusion of popular support. He must yeah. appear to be popular or he must construct legitimacy. Yeah. And it's true to all the dictators in this book. They mm. created a cult of personality, mm. especially through deification, making themselves <laughs> uh, gods on earth. Mm. People had to, for instance, bow down to their images like uh, Stalin. He had larger than life um, statues of himself, portraits of himself everywhere in the Red Square mm. and so did Mao and for Mao you needed to recite uh, his work and mm. praise his name mm. so they used uh, imagery to create a glorification of themselves yeah the term uh, cult of personality was actually coined by Nikita Khrushchev in 1956 when he was denouncing um, Stalin and then historians picked it up. Mm. The other thing actually about the creating your own uh, glorification was to inject some uh, element of um, uh, superstition and magic. Mm. And Hitler did this very well in Germany. He, 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 he created a messianic imagery um, mm. around him. Mm. And so did Francois de Valier of, um, of, of Haiti. He encouraged rumors of his mystical power, mm. which of course uh, worked in Haiti, which has a bigger uh, voodoo culture. Yeah. Secondly, dictators are afraid of their own people, particularly people in their own entourage Curious. and in their own courts. Curious. And for this reason, a lot of dictators, all of the ones in this book, um, seized power. So mm. if they seized power, they also imagine that the people around them will yeah. do the same thing to them. Mm. So they are permanently paranoid. Yeah. The other thing also is that a lot of dictators, their rivals or competitors were actually better than them mm. in many ways. Yeah. They were perhaps more charismatic. Yeah. They were perhaps uh, men or women of better learning than them. Yeah. A good example is Stalin. Mm. Stalin was actually not a, an articulate man. He didn't have the learnings of Trotsky. He yes. paled in com uh, comparison to him. Mm. Remember Trotsky created the, mm. the Red Army and he could interpret uh, the intellectually interpret the work of Marx. Yeah. Mm. 
he even had his uh, own writings. Mm -hmm. Kim Il Sung as well in North Korea, he was first of all imposed by the Russians mm -hmm. to the North Korean people mm -hmm. and his competitors had, uh, according to the author, better pedigree than him in terms of uh, mm. communist uh, underground workings. So dictators are always on their toes. They also create confusion. So by compelling everybody to love them and to demonstrate de devotion, they make everybody liars. Mm. And if everybody is a liar, nobody knows who to believe. believe. And this works as a protection mechanism for the dictator because if uh, people do not trust each other, then they cannot form accomplices and uh, stage coups. Absolutely. So the purpose of the cult also is to sow confusion. Finally, mm. um, to dictators, ideology is secondary to personality. Mm. Yeah. Uh, for Lenin and uh, Stalin, for instance, in Russia, the peasants of Russia could not comprehend uh, Marxist theory. Mm, you know, yeah. they, they could not talk about or, or even understand what dialectical materialism is. Yeah. So for them, the person, Lenin at that point, was more important than the um, ideology. Mm, yeah. And anyway, ideology to dictators is very fluid. It is what they want it to be. So they do not hold consistent worldviews. Mm. Mao Zedong famously said that he read uh, Marx over 90 times, but his interpretation of Marx's theories were uh, just suited to his own intentions. For instance, he, um, f for him, peasants mm. and not workers were the spearhead of mm. the revolution. Mm. So ultimately, ideology is what the dictator said it was. Mm. If you're a subject uh, of Stalin, then you are Stalinist. If you're a subject of Mao, you're Maoist. Mm. Of Kim, you're Kimist. Mm. So Leo, you are? So what are you? I'm JMist. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but for Mengistu, uh. when it comes to ideology, the his commitment and uh, to him you'll tell us more. His commitment <laughs> to to um, socialism was yeah. very shallow. It was more about uh, imagery. Mm. So he said that around Ethiopia there was the image of the Holy Trinity, and the Holy Trinity was Marx, Engels, and it was Lenin. And it was Lenin. Lenin. Yes. Mm. So one person who sums up dictatorship very well is Louis the Fourteenth of France, who said, "L'État c'est moi. Yeah. I am the state." state. Fantastic. Absolutely. Mm. And let's turn to North Korea's Kim Il-sung now. Kim Il-sung was the founding father of modern North Korea and presumably the most effective dictator of the 20th century. Uh, and, and this is for two reasons. Number mm. one, he built the most uh, controlled society on Earth. Mm. Indeed, North Korea remains the most controlled society on Earth. Mm. But secondly, he managed a delicate succession question. For over 70 years, North Korea has been led by the same family. Yeah. And that is something that most dictators uh, have desired but mm. been unable failed to, to execute. Mm. Yeah. Totally failed to do from Francesco Franco, Stalin, mm. uh, Pinochet, mm. uh, Mussolini, you mm. name it. Mm. Uh, and so we're told that Kim was born and raised a Christian. In fact, he was an organ playing, uh, very loyal, <laughs> devout uh, member of the choir of his church <laughs> <laughs> that is so interesting <laughs> who, who stalin <laughs> yes yeah, stalin also trained to be a priest yeah. is there a pattern here can you can you imagine mm. this these christians here who like reading the bible to us on twitter uh, some could be some of the worst dictators yeah mm -hmm. yeah you could knows? say that yeah, who, absolutely now in, in 1919 when kim was seven years old his family followed hundreds of thousands of other Koreans across the border into Manchuria, China, yeah. to escape colonial oppression by Japan. Mm. And so he effectively uh, went to the bush. He uh, lived in Manchuria uh, and, and later on in China, as well as in Russia. Mm. Uh, and he became a guerrilla movement leader. Mm. Uh, and, and I was thinking he is comparable to North Koreans. He is the equivalent of uh, of uh, Field Marshal Deden Kimathi mm. for us and for the Mao Mao. <laughs> so, so he uh, earned his stripes and his, his, his street credibility and his legitimacy uh, in, in, uh, in, in the Bush Wars uh, mm. of those days. Mm. <coughs> and so in the 1950s and the 19... So in 1945, after the Cold War, uh, when the Cold War begins mm. and after World War II ends, Russia, as you said, DM, imposes uh, uh, this 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 young uh, mm. Kim Il Sung <coughs> to the North Koreans, mm. and within a matter of time, about six months, he consolidates power yeah. and he becomes their leader. He continues to purge the system of any of his uh, opponents. Centers, yes, 
and uh, he begins to uh, install very solid uh, control mechanisms. And I'll mention three mm. in particular. Mm. Uh, first, we are told that there was a mandatory weekly program called self-criticism sessions. Oh, wow. This is what you were talking about, DM, the sowing of confusion and distrust uh, amongst Each. the populace. And so in Nyumbai Kumi type of settings, neighbors mm. had to come together uh, and everyone in the group had to criticize themselves and do so ferociously. Mm. And criticize those each other. Criticize each other, precisely. Mm. And those who refused to criticize each other uh, <coughs> would be called bad, would be called lazy, they'd be humiliated, they'd be put in a black book, uh, and, and they would be uh, cast off as disloyal uh, folks. Mm. And then the second is that we're told there was a 50,000 strong police force who would monitor the daily um, uh, lives of citizens, and the police used the data they collected to develop and to uh, reinforce a caste system, which ranked everybody into three categories based on their loyalty to the regime. And that determined the work that you did, the schools uh, that you went to, the education that you received. Mm. Uh, and we are told also that only the most loyal could live in Pyongyang, in the capital. Mm. Uh, and finally, we are told that everybody was forced to do two hours of indoctrination studies daily. And in those lessons, you had to speak and write about the leader's ideology. Additionally, uh, every day you would uh, you would have to you know uh, you would rituals where you'd have to mm. give thanks uh, to the dictator. <laughs> there was a huge portrait of him that you'd have to have in his house. Uh, <laughs> we're also told that babies uh, would not only uh, you know the first words they learned were yes, Baba and Mama, uh, but the third is uh, thank you, our dear leader, uh, for bringing <laughs> us this far. Something to that effect. So indoctrination en masse. Uh, eventually, uh, Kim uh, died in, in, in the 1980s, in, in, uh, no, no, sorry, in 1994, aged 82, but had handed over power to his son uh, during the 1980s. Mm. Mm. Jimmy, I have to agree, there's something admirable with this Kim Jong-un guy. He takes power at such a young age. And you know who he reminds me of? Mm -hmm. uh, Joseph Kabila took mm. power at the age of 29. Mm. Uh, this uh, Kim Jong-un is what, 34 years of age and he's carrying world leaders uh, yeah. across the board. Fantastic. Uh, Kim. I was, mm. I was, I was uh, on this guy, Mengistu Hale Mariam, and I want to label him as a Johnny Come Lately of the Ethiopian Revolution. Mm. And this guy was, uh, he was only uh, loyal to himself. Such a strong man. Now, in 1974, when uh, Emperor Haile Selassie was being deposed, a group known as the DAG, the DAG was uh, in America was known as a committee of military leaders. It was mm. a military junta. It took over. Now, DAG dismisses the prime minister, abolishes the, the emperor's crown council, mm. and Haile Selassie is deposed. He's, in fact, he's pushed, he's shoved into a VW, VW Beetle, mm. and he's uh, whisked away to oblivion. Mm. Now, the DAG appoints a general known as Aman Andom. Mm. This Andom, General Andom, was an Eritrean man, and uh, at the time he took power, he favored a negotiated settlement with the Eritrean Liberation Movement, of course after the collapse of Haile Selassie. Mm -hmm. Now, Eritrea then was a vast maritime province yeah, in Ethiopia, and uh, it uh, demanded for independence from Ethiopia. Now, the Dag did not want any sympathizers with the Eritrea, and anybody who wanted to sympathize with the Eritrea was actually taken out. So what do they do? They sent soldiers to go and arrest this man called General Andom. Mm. The man who sent these soldiers to arrest Andom was none other than uh, a firebrand, a man of minimal education, and his name was Haile Maria Mengistu. Mm. See, this uh, uh, Mengistu man, was actually picked up by General Landom. And mm. he used to be a messenger in General Landom's office. Landom grew up this man and he made him uh, grow until the point he became a sergeant in the military. Mm. Now, General... I feel like Cyrus Jirongo has a similar story. Oh, ab <laughs> about somebody else. <laughs> used to be a driver. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. DM. Now, uh, General Landom was actually killed when they tried to arrest him. 
and the person who killed him was sent by this guy called Harry Maram Mengistu. Mm. Mm. Anyway, uh, in a man's place, they appointed a man called General Teferi Banti, a hardline on, on Eritrea. And one of the vice chairman of the DAG of, uh, of, of, of uh, this guy called Teferi was none other again than Mengistu Haile Mariam. But Mengistu Ninani, he killed uh, Teferi on uh, 1977, February 3rd. And, oh my and, and, and that was at the, the, the palace, the Grand Palace in Addis Ababa. Now, the guy who took over was none other than Haile Mary Mingis. That's why I call him the Jolly, Johnny Kamditli of the Ethiopian uh, Revolution. Now, to cut long story short, this man was a strong man. Mm. This man was so crazy. He armed his own people to take out dissidents on the streets that were anti-revolution. This guy was so bad news. He killed, he crushed the Somalis so bad in uh, southern Ethiopia mm. when they tried their Ogaden war. Yeah. But Kama came his way. See, in March 1988, Eritrean rebel Rebels uh, crushed Mengistu's army in what was known as the Red Star Operation, actually started by Mengistu. Mm. And over 20,000 soldiers were killed and uh, captured by the Eritrean forces. 1990, the Eritrean rebels pushed all the way to the outskirts of Addis. This Mengistu man feels the heat, and you know what he does on 21st May 1991? Takes a small plane to Nairobi, and he ran away from Ethiopia. Calls, uh, make some calls to Harari and uh, Robert Mugabe decides to take him in uh, on, uh, in exam oh. or in exam. Now, long story short, what is a po what's my point here? Mengistu, Ming this the taking out of town of Mengistu would not have happened if had if at all he let the man who mentored him, yeah. General Andom, yeah. become leader. And you see, what Andom was actually agitating for was a negotiated peace deal with Eritrea. Mm. If there was a peace deal with Eritrea, the Eritrean Liberation Movement uh, rebels would not have fought uh, this man called Mengistu, mm. if at all he had taken power later. His only problem that he did not wait, he was loyal to himself, and he was a self-made man. And you know what we say about uh, self-made uh, men? Mm. Uh, if you want to see the the, the horrors of the horrors labor. of unskilled labor. You, no, you know, it, the okay. moment, no, the moment that you see you see a self made mud, you're staring at the horrors uh, of unskilled labor. labor. That's oh. right. <laughs> so he would still be president now. He was still, yeah. at 105. Uh, yes, Haile Selassie took power by when he was. Uh, I mean, he took power in 1916, oh. and I think they got deposed him in the 70s. So mm. he would have been leader for a long damn time. Mm. Mm. Very interesting series on dictators. Yeah. Um, so, on a day that we had a winning headline from the Daily Nation oh. and a winning cartoon from the Star, yeah. I will remind you not to forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We are also on your TV screens. Find us on Pan, Free to Air, GoTV, and Star Times. Have a good evening.